So welcome back. Let's talk about the real-time clock modules that we were looking at last time. And we have two on offer. The DS1307, which just about everybody has a version of that in their toolbox somewhere. But the newer one, the DS3231, is the one we'll be concentrating on today. It has several advantages. So we're going to build this today to at least retrieve the date and time from this chip into a Arduino Uno clone here and display it on the monitor. So, what do we need? Well, I've mentioned before that the communication between this board and this chip is going to be via a two-way cable. Now, two-way cable plus two for the power. So, if we connect the two serial I squared C pins in there, and uh, we can bring that in nice and close so we can see what we're doing. So there we have the the SCL and the SDM SDA, which is serial data and serial clock pins. And then we would need a five volt and a ground, which is down here. Now the colours of the of these um, cables we're using here just doesn't matter that much. I know that I've had comments before that all oh, sacrilege you should be using red for the positive and black for ground but well if the manufacturers of these DuPont cables were to come up with a, a black red black red black red version we'd all be buying them by the bucket load but they don't so we just pick random colors. So let's connect these four wires to the correct ones here which is ground on the right then the plus 5 volts then the serial data then the serial clock All right let's do that first right so there we are with the wires connected up um, obviously nothing is happening at the moment because if you can see this little LED down here it's um, blinking twice which is the standard sort of double blink program that I normally upload just to make sure that the Arduino board itself is working so <clears throat> now we need to actually run the code. What we'll do is uh, go to the computer and see what happens. So here we are on the computer now then with the code that we're about to upload. Now remember that when you first fire up um, Arduino with a basic nothing in it sketch as the programs are called um, it looks a bit like this. So let's just uh, make this a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. So this is a sketch that has absolutely nothing in it whatsoever. If we were up and I do this, nothing would happen on the Arduino. The two main sections we've got though is a setup that runs once as the Arduino is switched on. And then we have a loop where everything else happens. So those are the two sections that they give you and everything else you have to put in by yourself. So let's go back to the, uh, the main bit of code here. Now, um, if we conveniently ignore all this bit at the top, we don't want to get too um, sidetracked by that. We can see here a setup, and what we're saying is wire begin. That means I want the I squared C bus initialized, please. So go and do your stuff and don't bother me with the details. We're also setting up serial communications. Now, this isn't the same serial communications as the I squared C. This is the serial back to the monitor, back to the Windows or Mac. And you can see the results, the output from this program via this button here, which says Serial Monitor. If we click that, you can see there's nothing on it at the moment, but there will be if we write back to the serial port. So the setup is going to do something here in a minute, and the loop, which runs several thousand times a second potentially, they're going to say display the time and then wait for a second. So first of all let's think about what um, we're going to do here in the setup. Initially we should set the time of the DS3231 or 1307. This program works equally well with both of those by the way. Um, but we're just going to blank this out. As the comment here goes, look, only do this once. If you leave this line here uncommented, then every time the Arduino is reset, it will run this bit of code and set the date back. 
and the time to whatever it is you've specified here, which isn't the, the object to call of, at all, of course. So we'll do that in just a second. Now, what's this display time routine here? So the read DS3231 time routine, which is defined here, um, we're saying begin the transmission to the DS3231 address, which was defined at the top of our program here. We're saying our DS3231 can be found at address hexadecimal 0x68, which is a bit like saying on your street you can be found at house number 43. And post to house number 43 won't go to 38 or 122. So this is how we communicate down the I squared C protocol. We say when I do start communicating I want to begin at register address 0 and looking at the register here which we looked at previously we can see that address 0 starts here with the seconds and goes all the way up to minutes, hours, days, done, date, month and year. And then we say that's fine, that's the end of that transmission and now we say, now I would like, please, communicating with, the, on the I2C C bus and that address, hexadecimal 68. I'd like seven bytes of data, please. And what that does, it reads these seven bytes. So one being zero, two being one, all the way up to byte six, which is the year. So we've read seconds, minutes, hours, day of week, date, that's the nth of the month, the month itself and the year by executing this. Um, so having retrieved the values by executing this command, and this code here, we're now going to send it back out over the serial port that's connected to your PC and saying, right, now print out the hour, the minute, second, day of month, month, year, and so on. And this all comes back to your serial port, which you can see by clicking this button here. So, let's see if something happens and we do upload it. This is how we compile. Off it goes, it's starting to upload. Uploading done, and our serial port springs into life. And it's saying that the time is this, the date, the date of the week. So, on the 14th of November 2016, it's a Tuesday, and it is, but not because the DS3231 worked it out, it's because we told it initially in the setup and if you remember we said that the setup routine would only run once and here it is now it's commented out here to go how did that work well of course i've used this ds3231 31 before and it's remembered what was on there if we uncomment this line and re-upload we'll see what happens then to the serial this is saying 1234.01 Ah, now look, it's reset itself because we've uploaded this date and time again, which is why we don't want to keep doing that every time the re Arduino resets. If I press the reset button now on the Arduino, let's see what happens to this date and time, especially the seconds. Press the reset and it's reset back to the zero because it's executed this command again. So we need to put the comment back in there to prevent that happening in the future. So we'll comment that out and send that back up to the Arduino. There it goes, compiling. And now if you look at the monitor here, when it reset itself after uploading, it's carried on counting from where it left off. If I press the reset button now, it's stopped, it's resetting, and it's continued its time. If I unplug the Arduino entirely, there's a little window sound to say it's stopped, and plug it back in again, which effectively resets the Arduino, we can then look at the serial port again on here, and there it goes. So that's how you communicate with the DS3231 or a 1307 if you happen to have one. Simplicity itself, four wires, not a lot to it. So just to bring this bit of the video to a close now then, we've seen that by connecting the two 
uh, pins here, the SCL, which is the serial clock, and the SDA, which is the serial data, to the equivalent pins on the DS3231 and the DS1307 is identical in this respect. Right, so there you can see the pins. Uh, the bottom one is the ground, which is zero. VCC, which is plus five. SDA and SCL, which are the same pin names as what the Arduino board gives it. Um, in a future video, we'll talk about the top two pins, the square wave and 32K, but that's not important for this initial video. So, just by four wires then, a single real-time clock, an Arduino Uno clone, or your Nano on a um, development board, as per my previous project. If I bring that over here, so here we have the the Nano on a development board, exactly the same electronically. Um, you can start doing real things with a, a real-time clock, setting it, getting data, and so forth. Um, I'll post a couple of links on the bottom of this video. Um, with some very simple sample code before we think about how we're going to set the date and time in the future. For example, what happens when the clocks go back and we have daylight saving? How are you going to reset your real-time clock that might be down the bottom of your garden in the shed or in a beehive or something? Who knows where these things end up? And you certainly don't want to have to be dragging your laptop down there just because the clocks have gone back. So we'll think about how we can set that without having to go through all that paraphernalia. In the meantime though, I hope you found it interesting, great stuff, thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Remember you can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.